so this is my 1966 uh, Mustang Coupe Resto Mod. Hi, my name is Robert Pons. I'm a City of Miami firefighter. I own this 1966 Mustang Coupe Resto Mod. Uh, I bought it about four or five years ago and um, been working on it ever since. When I first bought it, it didn't have much of anything. It was just basically a rolling chassis. It had uh, just a transmission, no motor, no interior. And over the years, I had a plan. And with the help of my friend, Jim Hutton, who was a retired police officer, we were able to work on it little by little and get it to where it's at today. Where did you find this car? Uh, ironically, I was looking for a 1991 uh, coupe, the Fox body, and we couldn't find them anywhere. And I was just looking, I was looking, one, and then one day I decided to check on eBay while we were waiting to go to the, while I was waiting for my wife to get ready to go to the movies. And this thing pops up on eBay, uh, one of the, you know, the, the advertisements. So I went to look at it and I was like, hmm, and it just happened to be in Miami. And it interests me because this was the original car I liked when I was in high school. I always said I wanted to have a 1966 Mustang. I don't know why, but that particular year, but it was always something that I always said, you know, I love to have a 66 and it pops up. I tell my wife, hey, after the movies, if this guy responds, do you want to pass by? And she's like, yeah, let's go. And sure enough, in the middle of the movie, he texts me, we get text back and forth. And then after we, we end up uh, going to his house and it was a done deal after that. How much was he asking and the condition of it again was? So he was asking, I think about 12 and it was great shape. I mean, he had done all the work. The only thing was, is that when he decided to change, he changed his mind from going into cars, into fishing, he tried to get rid of everything. I have pictures of the original car. It used to be maroon red with maroon red interior. And his wife had bought it for him as a present, as a surprise. And it turned out to have a lot of rust. Tear was all rusted out on both sides. There was rust in the quarter panels and the rear and the trunk. So he was OCD like me and he started finding more and more rust, finding more rust and he decided to jump into that project. I don't know how many years he had it, could have been three or four years, but it got to the point I guess where he was like, I'm not, I can't do this anymore. So along came me and I bought it. It was pretty much painted as you see, but with no, just the windshield, no windows, no interior, just the carpet, no motor, just the transmission, automatic transmission hanging on by a cable. And the tires were 15 years old, I think, something like that. Oh, they looked wow. brand new, but they were 15 years old. And a lot of stuff needed to be redone because uh, I don't know if it was in a rush, but the, tr the suspension wasn't done right. Uh, a lot of things needed to be adjusted, you know. And there, I basically had a clean slate. I had a, I could do whatever I wanted. I didn't have to adhere to keeping it original. Since there wasn't anything left, I was like, all right, this is my my canvas, I can do whatever I want with it. And so where did you start? So uh, I had a plan of attack. My thing was, okay, the, what's gonna be the most expensive part? It was gonna be the motor. So I started doing my research and I started working a lot of overtime. I was able to order the motor from Performance Unlimited up in uh, Melbourne. The guys are awesome. Uh, they actually allowed me to be there while they built the motor since it was only like a three hour drive. I drove up there, brought some breakfast, and we were there for two days putting the motor together. It was great. I had all pictures of every every step. And we dynoed it, and on the second day we came back. Show me that engine. And what engine do you have in this thing? So it's a 302 blocks, uh, stroked out to a 347. It's got eagle rods, uh, eagle crankshaft, uh, forged pistons, uh, a comp. I think, the, I think the number is uh, 576 intake, 600 uh, exhaust. So it's... It's throaty, it's got that cam. Uh, originally when I bought it, it was carbureted. We switched over to Fitec and then eventually I switched over to Holly Sniper. You went with a black engine. Talk yes. to me. So he recommended the Black Mamba, which I was like, I don't know what that is. So he showed me pictures. And when I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, this is nice. This is gonna look great against the white, the white contrast. So that's why he threw in the white spark plug wires because I'm not a big fan of chrome. What's the dyno that? So on the dyno that they have, it came out to on the flywheel 486, which was pretty impressive. And uh, that was with the carb. So now with the fuel injection, I'm sure with a better tune, I'm gonna keep tuning it. We'll probably get up to the, you know, eventually I do want to put a supercharger, so. Uh oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> you have the serpentine? Serpentine belt, the Mach 1. That was extra. Uh, very nice system. 
um, changed the uh, the neck, the water neck for it, and because that was a, a constant issue with it, so we ended up with going with a with a racehorse. Uh, talk to me about the the wheels that, and the rims that you set. So that took forever because. You know, when you're making your design, you're trying to find the perfect rim, and there's so many rims. And, and anybody that knows anything about cars knows that just changing the rims changes the whole look of the car. It's just small details like that. So Chip Foose was a, a, always a hero of mine. I got actually got to meet him in SEMA, and we talked for a little bit, and he kind of gave me some ideas, which, you know, we only had five minutes to talk, but we were there for a little bit longer. So the, his, uh, his people were kind of pissed, but it was nice. It was nice. He, he took the time to sit down and talk, and and uh we went with these and uh ended up upgrading the brakes to willwood brakes we have six piston in the front four piston in the back and on top of that since i didn't have a parking brake i went with the electric parking brake which was even cool even cooler because you know 66 car with electric parking brake like these modern cars have it was pretty nice and what size rim did you go with uh 18 inch and and the tire size are you staggered or yeah staggered they're 255s in the front i believe and 275s in the rear um we had to get a special offset for those rims because of the, I mean, these cars weren't designed for 18 inch rims. So when we built the rims and had them ordered, we got them. And then when we put them in the back, especially the wheels in the back, they didn't fit. They were sticking out the, on the side, especially the passenger side. And we were trying to figure out why on one side there were, it was jutting out long. And it was like basically almost like a crab walk, but not really. And we ended up having to take apart the rear end. When we did the brakes especially, it helped out and we realized that the axles were, one was longer than the other. So we ended up having to shave them down little by little and we were able to figure out what was the issue and we were able to get them to sit nice finally. But it was stuff like that, that, you know, you fix one thing and you find other problems, just like with every other car. And we're just trying to fix things little by little. Suspension is a uh, CCP, I believe it's called. Uh, their front coilovers, dual adjustable in the front. The rear end is a nine inch rear with Moser axles. It's got the QA1 uh, dual adjustable uh, coilovers, which is great. It's still trying to adjust it because you know you either go too hard or too soft and then you really feel it during the ride. It came with an automatic, but no overdrive, four speed. It, you know, eventually I was able to save up and I bought the transmission. I, uh, we got it from uh, Modern Driveline Performance, I believe it is. And they basically put a package together for you. You tell them what you want. The guy asks you a bunch of questions. How fast you want to go? Is it a, a cruiser? Is it going to be on the expressway? You know, are you going to be doing more drag racing? So they adjust the gears. So it's got a, it's a TKO 600 with uh, carbon fiber sinks. So talk to me about the seats. So the seats are uh, TMI. It's a brand that basically you, they, you can actually call them and tell them what design you want and they will make custom seats for you. This is basically just a, one of the generic ones that they have. It's kind of like the deluxe pony style. This is how the deluxe used to come in, but it's got the bolstering and the suede inserts. So they were really nice, very comfortable. I eventually want to do the back too, to match. I'm a gadget guy. I don't know if you noticed. And I have uh, the LED lights. We have the Holly uh, sniper system, or I can tune it with my computer. We have the big screen over here where you can kind of see like a heads up display. You have your GPS speedometer. So, you know, I have two different ways. We have the Dakota digital speedometer gauge, which also uses uh, GPS. Uh, I have a push button start, which is uh, basically you have a fob. When you come into the car, the light turns blue, just like modern cars, and you start it off that way. The other electronic thing that's kind of cool is by remote, I can open and close the exhaust. So if I want to come into the neighborhood nice and quiet, I can close the exhaust. If I want to hear it, basically it'll be open headers. 